वन लेस देन अ हंड्रेड नासरुद्दीन हौजा वक अप अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग एंड क्विकली गॉट रेडी फॉर हिज प्रेज अल्लाह प्लीज गिव मी अ हंड्रेड गोल्ड कॉइन्स नाइन्टी नाइन विल नॉट बी इनफ अ हंड्रेड गोल्ड कॉइन्स इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट इफ यू गिव मी नाइन्टी नाइन गोल्ड कॉइन्स आई विल नॉट एक्सेप्ट इट सेट द हौजा इन फैक्ट दिस वॉज हिज डेली रूटीन Every single day the Hajja knelt in his courtyard and prayed hard for God's blessings in the form of gold coins. The Hajja's neighbor, a rich merchant called Nazim, had been watching and hearing him day after day. So one day he thought he would try to see if the Hajja really meant what he said. So the next day Nazim put 99 gold coins in the bag and waited quietly behind the chimney on his terrace. The moment the Hajja came into his courtyard for his prayers, he threw the bag of coins down into the courtyard. Taken aback, the Hajja carefully picked up the bag. He was pleasantly surprised when he opened the bag. and saw the gold coins naturally he started counting and found only 99 coins so he sat down with a deep sigh he knew that god would not listen to him in total silence so he said loudly o oh, merciful allah you have answered my prayer partly Maybe you just forgot that the coin should have been a hundred in number. However, it does not matter at all. You can give me the last coin tomorrow. The Hajja put the ninety-nine coins back into the bag and went inside. Nazim was now at a loss. The Hajja, it seemed to him, was determined to keep the ninety-nine gold coins. This made him nervous. After thinking over it all morning, Nazim went quietly to the Hoja and said, "Good sir, many greetings. Please give me back my bag of gold coins. I threw it down only to see how you would react. What are you talking about? Are you joking? You've never given any money to me." Was the Hoja's answer. "Come, come, learned sir. Though I may not be as learned as you are." I am not a complete idiot. Hearing your plea to God for the hundred gold coins, I threw down that bag of coins at your feet. They are mine, and no man can take them away from me. He shrugged his shoulders and said, "I can't understand, Nasim, how you can be so sure that you gave them to me." The merchant kept repeating that it was he who had thrown the bag of coins, but the Hoja. did not listen to him he said the money was his and had come to him as an answer to his prayers nazim was almost in tears he said i shall take you to court for robbing me of my money stroking his beard in a thoughtful manner the hoja said i'm most willing to go to court with you the merchant wanted to go at once But the Hoja said, "I am not as young as I once was, and cannot walk all that way." Eager to get his hands on his money as soon as possible, Nazim went into his house and brought a sturdy donkey. "Yeah, you can ride this donkey. I'll find myself another one. But let's leave at once," he said, a little satisfied, but not completely. The Hoja found another excuse. How can I appear before the judge so shabbily dressed? It would be very disrespectful. Nazim was set on taking the Hoja to court. So, he went back home and brought a new silken dress and a fur coat for the Hoja to wear. The Hoja examined the clothes and was satisfied with them. At the court, The judge asked them what the matter was. Nazim told him the story. The Hajja stood stroking his beard 
all the time. After the merchant had finished, the Hoja cleared his throat once and spoke to the judge. Your Excellency, Nazim is my neighbor. I have seen him standing on his terrace and watching me pray. He may have seen me counting the gold coins that God gave me today. Right now he is trying to be smart. He wants to grab the money the benevolent one has given me. Nazim replied, Believe me, my lord, the coins are mine. I never tell a lie. Hearing him pray for a hundred coins, and only a hundred coins, daily, I threw ninety-nine gold coins down into the courtyard to see what he would do if he got one coin less than what he had prayed for. My lord, not only is Nazim smart, but he is also crooked. He often does things like this. Next he will probably say that the clothes I am wearing are also his, but they are mine, cried the merchant raising his voice. I gave them to him to wear to court today. The fur coat and the silk dress, they are all mine. You see, my lord, broke in the Hoja, shrugging his shoulders. Next he will say that the donkey I am riding is also his. Everyone knows that I have my own donkey, said the Hoja. He didn't have one, shouted the merchant. Now beside himself with rage, the judge could take it no more. I've never seen such a rogue in all my years in this court. How dare you accuse an honest and respectable man? Your greedy nature will lead you to disaster. Complaint dismissed. Take him away. He declared. The guards at the court at once pushed the merchant out. The Hoja went home in his fine silken clothes. Happily riding on the donkey, he found the miserable merchant sitting on his doorstep. The Hoja said, not unkindly, Now take back your donkey and the dress and the gold coins, neighbor. But remember the lesson you've learned today. Don't at any time tempt an honest man to break his word.